Hey folks, console repair guy here. Uh, today I'm going to show you guys how to replace a laser in a KES 400A Blu-ray drive for the older PS3 fat style models. The easiest way to tell if you have a KES 400A is by looking at the bottom of the drive. And if you see here this circuit board with a small heat shield. If you have this, you have a KES 400. If the whole drive is covered on the bottom with a silver shield, you have a KES 410 drive. And you can check out my other video in the top right corner here for that drive. Okay, so let's look at removing the drive first. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is if you look at the front of the drive here in the corner is uh, remove the power cable. So just lift up slightly. It might give a little pop there, but that's okay. Lift up slightly and just pull that right out. Okay, put that to the side and just tilt the drive up. If you look here on the bottom, on this little connector here, you just pop up on the jaw and pull that out. Okay, so starting out, there's five screws to, to remove here. Back two corners and three in the front. Just remember the two silver screws go back here and the three black ones go in the front here. So let's remove those. And try to remember which side uh, this little piece here is on. It'll be this corner here. Okay, now if you just want to replace the whole entire drive, if you're not feeling confident enough to remove the laser and replace it yourself, all you need to do is remove these two screws here and pop up these three connectors here and pull these cables out. And then you would just remove this circuit board and transfer it over to your new drive. Okay, so now we'll flip the drive over, lift it from the back side until it clears, and then push forward. And it will pop off. You see, there's a couple of teeth here on the front that grab the bottom of the drive. So, put that aside. Okay, now here we have one, two, three, four, five more screws. These are all black screws, same size as the other ones, so don't worry about getting them mixed up. Okay, now on the front left side of the drive, see this little white piece of tape here? You're going to want to remove that. And what I do so we don't lose it is just stick it on beside there. Okay, so now we're going to lift up from this side. magnetic disc holder. I'll just put that to the side for now. Okay, now be very careful here. This little wire is very fragile. So what you want to do is grab it in as close to the board as you can. 
and pull it right out. And that's for your uh, disc sensor, the insertion sensor here. Now we're just going to replace the laser module, which is this piece right here. If you want to make it a little easier on yourself, or if you feel like maybe one of your motors is weakening, you can replace this whole assembly by removing these four screws here, 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 and here. And then you would just lift up from this side, because you can see here this piece is in the way, so lift up gently from this side, and it will just come right out. To remove the laser assembly, we're just going to remove this screw here, this screw here, here, and here. It's good to have a magnetized screwdriver for this. These screws are pretty small, it's hard to grab them with your fingers. Okay, now we just have to remove these clamps here, or these clips rather. What you want to do is just kind of pull them towards you, and they'll pop right out. You do have a little piece sticking out here that grabs on under. Or you can just lift them from the back side of them when you can get at them. Okay, so once you have those screws out, you cannot begin by removing this bar on this side here. Can't remove this one yet. And then you're going to remove this little piece of tape. You might not have one here. It's actually pretty rare to see this piece of tape on here. Uh, that just basically holds the clamp down. So we can just throw that away. We don't even need that anymore. Uh, if you can't get, if you don't have any fingernails, uh, it's good to use a, a spudger tool like this. Just pop it under carefully under the back and lift up, and that comes right out. Okay. Now let's just grab the laser from this side here and lift it out. So remove this rod, put that aside. Now your new laser, uh, you might not have this white piece over here on the side, so if you don't, there's just one screw on the bottom there. So just remove that screw, and be careful not to lose it, it's really tiny, and transfer this over to your new laser. But the laser I have here already has the piece on it. Okay, so I'll take your new laser and you're going to put the rod in this side here. And drop it into place just like that. attach your clips on here. These can be tricky to get on sometimes, but basically just get the front part underneath this little ledge here, and then clip the back down. Like that. And the front one. If you see here, there's a little metal spring sticking up. So you want the rod to go on top of that, but under this white plastic piece here. So I'm 
sometimes it's easier if you lift the laser up and pop it in like that. And just make sure it's centered between these two retainers here. Okay, put your clamps back on here. And it's easier to clip the front side first and then line up the back. Okay, now plug in your cable. Pop down the jaw connector and you're just about ready. Now, one thing I'd like to I want to mention here: uh, if you do take this drive apart with a game in it, you're going to have some problems when it goes back together. So, what you're going to have to do there: uh, this is going to be all locked up. So you'll have to remove this one screw here. That one's different from all the rest, so don't make sure you don't mix it up. And just lift this straight up. Be careful not to mess up any of the gears there. Just put it aside gently. And all you have to do is remove this screw here and this screw here. Okay, now lift out the motor put it aside and all you have to do is basically once that happens your gears might actually spring back on their own if they don't here's what they're going to be like when the drive is locked in place so just take this one here and this one here pull this one back and push that one forward and everything should drop down level there okay and just put your motor back in place screws back in. Okay. This just kind of sits in place here. Oh, that's another thing. If you look on the side here, this little white cog, if that's sticking up, you just want to push it in that way and it will drop down. That's another important part. If you don't do that, your disc is not going to go in the drive. Okay just like that. And put the screw back. Okay, now we're going to put the cover back. And this part here it does have to go on a certain way. So, uh, first you're going to want to plug in your disk sensor wire. Basically if you're wondering which way it goes in, uh, you want to put the side that has the wires exposed, where you can see the red and black. You want to put that part facing down. And just try to get it, hold it in as close to that little clip as you can. This can be tricky, um, I've done it quite a few times so I'm kind of used to it, but you might need a pair, a pair of tweezers or something to get this in here. Okay. Alright, so the important thing here when putting this back on is this little piece right here. So, we want is you want it to be down here. 
it's covering these two little holes behind it, then it's not going to go back together right. It'll The cover will go on, but the drive won't take your disc in. So just make sure that's down, which normally it, it'll stay down. So it's pretty easy with this one compared to the, the other drives. So just hold it from this side. Carefully bring it over. I want to break that wire. Now see what just happened there. Let me get a better view on this. These two holes here, if you can see the white plastic through there, you know it didn't go together right. So we're going to pop that back off. Make sure that's down. And I'll do it again carefully. Holder back. And put your screws back in. Okay, and before you put your metal shield back on, it's a good idea to just go ahead and test the drive, just like that. And also, I'm going to take this white sticker on the side here, and put it back over this wire. So that doesn't catch on anything. this, so the uh, teeth are in the front and in front of the drive facing away from you, and just take the cover on a nail like this, pull it in, so you can see underneath these uh, teeth will grab over it, and then just push it down on the back. Okay, then you're going to put your front screws back in. Remember to take your little clips, hold this in with your finger, and then kind of also hold the clip in place, and your screw in. Same with the other side. clip on this back left corner here. Now 
this actually this looks like dirt, but it's actually heat marks from the, the console being so hot. Okay, so that's it, your drive's fully reassembled. Now you can go ahead and put it back in your console. the drive circuit boards facing you It's easier if you just lay the drive down first, so it's in place, then just kind of grab it, lift up on one side, and plug your power cable in. And there you have it. So if any of you guys don't feel comfortable doing this repair on your own, uh, you can go to my website at www.consolerepairguy.com. And if you look in the PS3 section on the left there, you'll find the repair service for that there. Okay, and uh, if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, please like and subscribe. And hopefully we'll be getting out lots more videos like this in the very near future. So thanks for checking out my video and have a great day.